Hello, Photopillar, Rafael Dabar here. Let's talk about Depth of Field. Depth of Field is a really powerful tool. When you control Depth of Field, you get the creative control of what appears in focus and out of focus in your photos to tell the story you want to tell. Sometimes you want to shoot a really deep Depth of Field, for example, to maximize Depth of Field, to have everything in focus. And other times you want to shoot a shallow Depth of Field to center the viewer's attention to a certain spot in the scene. Well, in this video you'll learn everything you need to master depth of field. Ready? Welcome to the amazing universe of depth of field. Due to the fact that the camera can only precisely focus the lens at one spot, at one distance at a time, sharpness gradually decreases on each side of the focus distance. Therefore, depth of field is the distance between the nearest and the furthest element in the scene that appears acceptably sharp in the photo. At this point, you're probably wondering how you can control depth of field. Well, to see the settings you can use to control depth of field, go to photo pills and now tap on depth of field, DOF, to access the depth of field calculator of photo pills. Here you can quickly see that depth of field depends on your camera, your camera sensor, the focal length, the aperture, and the focus distance. In addition to these settings, it also depends on the subjective assumptions behind what we consider exactly sharp, or what is also called the circle of confusion, which I'll explain in another video, I promise. But let's go back to photo pills. As you see, with the Nikon Z6 and a focal length of 50 millimeters, an aperture of f5.6, and focusing at 5 meters, I'm getting a depth of field of 3.78 meters. This is the distance between the depth of field near limit, 3.74 meters, and the depth of field far limit, which falls at 7.52 meters. On the table, you also have the depth of field in front of the focus distance, 1.26 meters, this is 33.23%, and the depth of field behind is 2.52 meters, this is 66.77% of the total depth of field. If you swipe to the left, you can also see all the depth of field information on a picture. And if I swipe again, I get the hyperfocal information also on a picture. But let's go back to the table. Ah, I forgot. And if you tap the AR button here at the bottom, it's amazing what happens because you can actually see the depth of field on the floor through the augmented reality view. So I know that Okay, the hyperfocal distance is this blue line, I'm focusing at 5 meters, and my near depth of field limit is 3.74, and my depth of field far limit is 7.52 meters, so I'm gonna get in focus this uh, area here. These lines are drawn on the floor, so if I stand up, you see my feet here, I could really clearly see the areas of the scene that are gonna be in focus, which is amazing. I love the AR views, I love them. Use them. The table also gives you the hyperfocal distance, 14.81 meters, and the hyperfocal near limit, 7.4 meters. This means that if I'm focusing at the hyperfocal distance, I'm gonna get in focus from 7.4 meters, this is half of this distance, half of the hyperfocal distance, till infinity. So I'm maximizing depth of field when I am focusing at the hyperfocal distance. In other words, the hyperfocal distance is the shortest distance you can focus at to have infinity in focus. To have, for example, the stars in focus, or a far away mountain in focus, or the moon in focus, or the sun. In the Flopil's team we use a lot of hyperfocal distance when we're photographing the stars, the Milky Way, or even the moon. And as I showed you before, you can use the AR view here to see where the hyperfocal distance falls, is this blue line here, 14.81 meters. And remember, these lines are drawn on the floor, so you need to find something that falls right where this blue line is. Awesome! If you wish to learn how to use the hyperfocal distance, if you wish to learn how to focus at the hyperfocal distance to maximize the field, why is this video? It's just one minute, but it'll teach you everything you need. Okay, to see how all these settings can affect depth of field, let's play a bit with the depth of field calculator. Let's change one setting at a time to see how it affects depth of field. Let's start with the aperture. 
The aperture is probably one of the most used settings to control depth of field. Have a look at the calculator. With an aperture of f5.6, I'm getting a total depth of field of 3.78 meters. If I open the aperture, if I go to an aperture of, for example, 2.8, let's see what happens. The total depth of field is 1.73 meters, so the depth of field decreases. I'm getting a shallower depth of field. And if I'm closing the aperture, for example, if I go to an aperture of f11, the total depth of field goes to 12.2 meters. The depth of field increases. Therefore, use large apertures, wide apertures, to get shallow depth of field, and close the aperture to get a deep depth of field, to get more depth of field. So, the more you close the aperture, the more depth of field you'll get. But there is one limitation, diffraction. Diffraction is the result of light dispersion caused by the edges of the diaphragm blades in the lens. Due to diffraction, the image will look more softened, less sharp, with less detail. So be careful, don't close the aperture too much. With a focal length of 50 mm, I'm getting a depth of field of 3.78 meters. Let's see what happens when I'm using a longer focal length. For example, let's set a focal length of 85 millimeters. Then I'm getting a depth of field of 1.17 meters. It's a smaller depth of field. So when I'm using a longer focal length, the depth of field decreases. Let's see what happens when I'm using a shorter focal length. For example, uh, 35 mil. Okay, the depth of field now is 12.99 meters. It's a much larger depth of field. So the longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field. And the shorter the focal length, the more depth of field you'll get. Let's continue with the focus distance. Focusing at 5 meters, I'm getting a depth of field of 3.78 meters. But if I'm focusing at a larger distance, let's say 10 meters, the depth of field increases to 24.73 meters. It's a much larger depth of field. Now, if I'm focusing at a shorter distance, let's say 3 meters, And the depth of field is 1.25 meters. So the larger the focus distance, the more depth of field you'll get. And if you get closer to your subject, if you're focusing to a shorter distance, you're gonna get a much shallower depth of field. Great, let's see now how the sensor size can affect the depth of field. Okay, this is important. In order to understand how the different sensor size can affect the depth of field, we need to keep all the settings equal, the rest of the settings equal. The aperture, the same framing, and the same subject distance. This means that with the crop sensor camera, to have the same framing, we're gonna need to use a shorter focal length. In other words, we're gonna need to use the same effective focal length. Let's see how the sensor size affects the depth of field. With a full frame camera like the Nikon Z6, and a focal length of 58 millimeters, shooting at f5.6 and focusing at 5 meters, I'm getting a depth of field of 3.78 meters. This is for the full frame camera. Now, let's choose a crop sensor camera, for example, the Fujifilm X-T2, which has a crop factor of 1.53. Now, to have the same framing, I need to change the focal length. So I'll tap on focal length, and here I'm gonna use the 35 mil millimeters equivalent, and I'm gonna introduce 50 millimeters. In this way, I'm telling that I want the same framing. I want, for a full frame, a 50 millimeters focal length. So, tap on done, and the calculator calculates the, the real uh, focal length. 32.7 millimeters, which applied with the crop sensor factor gives me the 50 millimeters focal length, the same framing. Well, with these settings, the depth of field is 7.04 meters. Therefore, I'm getting a much larger depth of field. I can conclude that the larger the sensor, the shallower the depth of field will be, considering the same framing, the same effective focal length. And also, a second conclusion could be, for example, that when shooting portraits, Shooting with a full frame camera will give you shallow depth of field, will give you much pleasant images because it gives you much more control over the shallow depth of field you'll get. So to sum up, how can you get shallow depth of field? This is the way to do it. 
to get a shallow depth of field, you can open the aperture, get closer to the subject, focus at a shorter distance, and also use a telephoto lens, a much longer focal length. This is for the shallow depth of field. And for a deep depth of field, let's continue. And to get a deep depth of field, you can close the aperture, but watch out with diffraction. You can get further away from your subject, you can increase your focus distance, or you can go wide, you can use a shorter focal length. Oh, I almost forgot. And don't forget, you can also focus at hyperfocal distance to maximize the depth of field. Actually, I'm leaving a link to the description of this video to a short tutorial on how to focus at the hyperfocal distance. Check it out. And I promise in the future I'll do a full video on the hyperfocal distance. I promise. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And that's it. This is how you can control depth of field. Use it to create really eye-catching images. Depth of field is a really powerful creative tool. Take advantage of it. And as always, if you have a question, leave a comment below. I'm ready to help. And if you want more depth of field and you want to keep learning, I'm leaving a link in the description of this video to our super depth of field guide. Check it out. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and click on the bell to get notified when I release the next video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.